the power losses we're going to get to a million dollars a coin within 10 years mm -hmm. i would actually argue that would be a good pace if you get a million dollars a coin within two years i'll tell you what's next mm -hmm. what's next is the, the the mother of all crashes okay that's what's next and then federal investigation laws banning bitcoin everything right we're we'd be better off if it if it took 10 years to get to a million dollars a coin that would be the preferable thing not for it to happen in two years if you look at kind of the a uh, rate of bitcoin adoption meaning how many uh, how many how many wallets have say one bitcoin in them right also a power law yeah how many bitcoins have a tenth of a bitcoin in them a power law how many bitcoins have wallets have a hundredth of a bitcoin it's a power law you know the ratio of one bitcoin to a hundredth of a bitcoin to a tenth of a bitcoin to 10 bitcoin also a power law so if you look at the hash rate it's a power law so it's like it's not even one thing it's like 10 things that are all power laws that all correlate to each other and really you get you really understand that this thing is really like it's kind of like a virus or something you know it's sort of like if you look at these mobile phone adoption curves you know they're they're very steady curves right and you you know you you look at television adoption radio adoption you know these technological they follow these very steady curves right and so i think bitcoin's just in the process of following some kind of s curve like that at this point if we haven't even begun the S part of it, right? Where it's going to sort of level off. It, it has to, at some point, level off. But right now, in, we're in the very beginning part of the S curve, right? Where it just looks kind of exponential, right? Mathematician Fred Kruger believes wholeheartedly in the Bitcoin power law model. The Bitcoin power law model predicts that Bitcoin will hit $1 million per coin in the next 10 years. In his latest interview, Fred broke down why he believes that small investors don't want it to happen any faster than that. For those who don't know Fred Kruger, he's an extremely successful investor who has a PhD in mathematics from Stanford. After decades of experience investing on Wall Street, he's gone all in on one thing, Bitcoin. In his latest interview, Kruger broke down his Bitcoin outlook and why he believes in the Bitcoin power law model. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video where Kruger breaks down why despite believing Bitcoin will hit $1 million in the next 10 years, he reveals when he will be selling. Also guys, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If if you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Now here's Fred Kruger on the Bitcoin power law model. For whatever reason, you know, the stock to flow uh, plan B kind of narrative kind of won the attention war in, tw in tw 19, uh, 2019, 2020, right? So everybody was talking about that. Plan B got, you know, 3 million followers and Giovanni got three followers you know so, so you know he kind of so he kind of gave up in 2019 he's like well nobody's paying attention to what i did and stuff but i i actually do think that this power law you know coming from a, a statistical background you know um you know i look at the stuff and i'm like okay this is this is clearly the correct mathematical model for this thing um and and basically if you look at this thing you plot plot this thing in log log terms you realize that there ver is a very very simple and strong correlation between the price of bitcoin uh, in log log space and and the time since genesis right so basically bitcoin's going up at roughly the sixth power a little bit less than the sixth power of time so it's it's a it's a very fast growing curve. It's not quite exponential, but it's it's not even it's much more uh, fast growing than a parabola. It's it's you know time to the sixth power. So that's a really fast growing curve. And once you understand that and you start measuring it and you start analyzing the standard deviation of this, you really see that we have a very 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 good model for how this stuff statistically has performed. And there. You know, there really it really is. Uh, it's a very good fit statistically. Now you could sort of say, well, it's going to fail. It's going to, but look, it hasn't failed at all over a very long period of time. 
It was even tested outside the model because Giovanni kind of gave up on it in 2019 and other people sort of found it stuff and they, they continued the plus and, and it's kind of, it's been tested every, every which way. Um, you know, there's lots and lots of different tests that have been made to it. So it's, it's from a purely statistical point of view, it's really compelling. Now, the other thing about it is if you look at kind of the a rate of Bitcoin adoption, meaning how many how many how many wallets have say one Bitcoin in them, right? Also a power law. Yeah. How many Bitcoins have a tenth of a Bitcoin in them? A power law. How many Bitcoins have wallets have a hundredth of a Bitcoin? It's a power law. You know, the ratio of one Bitcoin to a hundredth of a Bitcoin to a tenth of a Bitcoin to 10 Bitcoin, also a power law. So if you look at the hash rate, it's a power law. So it's like, it's not even one thing, it's like 10 things that are all power laws that all correlate to each other. And really, you get, you really understand that this thing is really like, it's kind of like a virus or something, you know, it's sort of like, if you look at these mobile phone adoption curves, you know, they're, they're very steady curves, right? And you, you know, you, you look at television adoption, radio adoption, you know, these technological adoption, they follow these very steady curves, right? And so I think Bitcoin's just in the process of following some kind of S curve like that. At this point, it's, we haven't even begun the S part of it, right? Where it's gonna sort of level off. It, it has to at some point level off. But right now in, we're in the very beginning part of the S curve, right? Where it just looks kind of exponential, right? I do think we're gonna hit an S curve inflection point somewhere around somewhere between 10 and 20 years from now but you know we got to get to like 10 percent adoption 20 percent adoption before we we really hit that that inflection point and and this stuff even even that can be modeled like so and has been so so i definitely think that this is a statistical model it's kind of a normal model for technology adoption i think bitcoin is a technology you know, it's a it's a new form of money. It's better money tech than the previous form of money, you know, which was fiat. And fiat was a better form of money than gold from a pure product market fit for society. You know, we don't, we don't really do great moving around gold coins. You know, that that worked fine in the you know Venetian ages. You know, you come with a little purse of gold coins and stuff doesn't work did not even work that well in the 19th century it completely failed in the 20th century right that, that stuff's not working uh, but Bitcoin is um, Bitcoin you know is 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 really kind of a a you know money for the 21st century I really think you know it, and and beyond right now it's not you know as many people have said it's not fast enough it's you know has has all kinds of scaling issues and stuff you know if you're going to use it as not not everybody can use bitcoin base layer it just can't can't work that way right now so either they're going to have to increase the block size or they're going to have to um, build layer twos on it that that really work very well but all these things are going to happen you know and i'm i'm convinced that 30 years from now everybody will think in sats that's that's my belief like as crazy as it is i know everybody's thinking in terms of euros and dollars and pounds and yen but they're all going away hmm. it, it's gonna be sats you know sats is gonna be the unit of account and um you know that that's a kind of a it's a pretty big leap of of faith you know from from a thought perspective you know to think that we're going to sats the power losses, we're going to get to a million dollars a coin within 10 years. Mm -hmm. I would actually argue that would be a good pace. If you get a million dollars a coin within two years, I'll tell you what's next. Mm -hmm. What's next is the, the, the mother of all crashes. Okay. That's what's next. And then federal investigation, laws banning Bitcoin, everything, right? We're we'd be better off if it if it took ten years to get to a million dollars of coin. That would be the preferable thing, not for it to happen in two years.
So I, I think, look, it's, it's not even slow. I mean, a million dollars a coin would be like the best performing asset of all times, you know, asset class. This is amazing, right? So I think I think that's kind of what we're going to get. I think it's it's fine. It's nothing to sneeze at. And uh, look, as I said sort of before, if we get to a million dollars a coin in two years, I'm the happiest. I'll be the happiest guy who is wrong ever. Fantastic, you know. But I, I just, I don't think we're getting there. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't think you can count on that. And as much as, as much as I'm excited about ETFs, um, you know, I, I, I am, I'm excited because I think that means the chance of us getting there is much higher, right? I think the chance of us kind of failing to the downside is low right now, right? So I always look at the downside. It's like, okay. Is Bitcoin going to be lower than 70,000 five years from now? No, not going to happen, right? Really not likely to be lower than 70,000 five years from now. You know, so I think it's a really, that's why I say right now is a really great risk return point to be in Bitcoin. You know, that's my opinion. Look, I think also just you should want it from the point of view of you've got, you know, you've got 10 good years to earn money. Right. And to put to accumulate more Bitcoin. Right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, maybe you'll be buying your Bitcoin at 200,000. So what if you're buying it at 200,000 on the way up to five to a million? You don't care. Right. You you don't want it to just moon to a million right now. Um, me, on the other hand, I'm I probably have peak Bitcoin for Fred. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to be getting rid of a little bit of Bitcoin down the road. But, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I'm I'm not planning on being the richest Bitcoiner in the cemetery either, you know. So, you know, I'm uh, I, I'm planning on spending some of my Bitcoin, but I don't really have any need to spend anything right now. So, uh, but you know, if if Bitcoin gets to anywhere close to a million dollars, I'm 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 getting rid of some of my Bitcoin and buying some some other stupid thing with it. I don't know. You know, everybody has a price. Everybody has a price and everybody wants everybody. There's like Nate, somebody said nature abhors a void. So, you know, if you've got money, there's some stupid thing that you're, you you want to spend it on. Right. I don't care if it's like some, you know, some abstract art painting or some ordinal or some, you know, some ridiculous house or whatever it is, whatever, whatever, whatever you, whatever it is that floats your boat. But you know, the, the point of this is to, to enjoy it too. I do think that, you know, right now there's a pretty good argument for delaying some of that gratification, uh, at least 10 years. But, um, yeah, but as you get older, you, you kind of realize you don't have infinite amount of time either. So. So there's Fred Kruger on why he's extremely bullish on Bitcoin, and this isn't coming from just anyone. Fred has a PhD in mathematics and has decades of experience on Wall Street. When it comes to financial modeling and predictions, he's the guy. Looking back on the last three crypto bull cycles, the pattern is clear. Bitcoin is following a power law, and from a mathematics guy, this is extremely profound and shouldn't be discarded. Kruger believes because of the power law, Bitcoin will hit 1 million per coin over the next 10 years. Finally guys, before we go, a quick reminder for those who are keen on staying updated in the fast paced world of crypto and Bitcoin, consider subscribing to our daily 5 minute crypto newsletter. It's a concise resource for the latest expert predictions, breaking news and top on chain analysis, trusted by over 60,000 subscribers for insightful crypto investment information. Click the first link in the description to join our community and elevate your crypto investment knowledge today. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value, I'll see you all in the next one and as always always all the best.